All right, well, welcome everyone. Hello, my name is Bernie Jaroslow. I'm marketing manager for Whitmix, and I'd like to welcome you to Whitmix webinar, Bellis 3D Dental Pro, Creating the Virtual Patient with Lee Culp and Joel Avilas. So before we begin, there's a, always a couple housekeeping items. First, there's a question box where you're welcome to uh, put any questions you like in throughout the program, and then eventually we'll, uh, we'll answer them at the end. Uh, Lee or Joel will answer them verbally. So just type them in and I'll take care of getting them answered. Uh, next, if you're a CDT, the webinar is approved for an hour of CE credit towards your recertification. Uh, that'll take a day or two and we'll send you uh, instructions as to how to uh, get the CDT credit. Uh, lastly, the webinar is being recorded. It usually takes a day or two and we, it will be up on the Whitmix website, of course, in the webinar section, and it'll also be on the Whitmix uh, YouTube channel as well. So you'll be able to find it uh, all over the place. So this morning I have the pleasure of introducing Lee Culp and Joel Avilas. Lee is a, a CDT and the CEO of Sculpture Studios, Sculpture Academy, and is a recognized pioneer in digital dentistry and advanced functional aesthetic dentistry. As a world-renowned innovator and educator, he lends his vision and talent to developing materials and communication standards to ensure the most realistic opportunities for success. Joel Avilas, CDT, is an accomplished digital dental designer and talented ceramics technician, helping to create beautiful smiles for Sculpture Studios clients and their patients. He's an honors graduate of Durham Technical College where he completed his associate in applied science degree in dental technology, and he worked in several labs before he joined uh, Sculpture Studios. So today, you'll learn how to create the virtual patient with the Bellis 3D facial scanning uh, CT scans, and even intraoral scans. Uh, you'll learn how to use a digital face bow and transfer to the digital articulator. You'll explore new ways to achieve optimal dentist, surgeon, and technician teamwork using digital communication and design and new shared responsibilities. And you'll also understand the restorative services that the digital lab can offer from simple restorations digital dentures, orthodontics, to complex implant and maxillofacial surgery using Bellis 3D face scanning technology. So it's a long intro, but that's all I've got. So Lee and Joel, if you're ready, let's talk uh, Bellis 3D Dental Pro. Hey, Bernie, thank you so much. <laughs> We're definitely ready. Uh, so thank you and Whitmix for allowing us to do this. So guys, today we're gonna talk about an amazing new technology that we've been using for several years now. We looked at it back when it was just a consumer product and we, along with many others, saw the potential in dentistry and approached Bella to kind of specialize their software a little more for us. So we've been, again, working with them for several years now and they've done some amazing things and it's really changed the way we communicate with our doctor clients. And that's what Joel and I are gonna go through today and just kind of show you what we do, how we do it, the benefits of it, and especially in today's world with COVID-19, how it's really the perfect link for communication with your dentist. <clears throat> because everything is about communication. When people think digital, they generally think a machine that makes something. I've never thought of it that way. That's always been a part of it. But digital has always been ultimate communication between patients, dentists, specialists, and laboratories. So when we look at the digital team today, the roles are actually changing. What I do now in our laboratory is so much different than what I was doing five or 10 years ago. But the digital team is, is really changing and we're redefining the roles and responsibilities of what we do. So let's just start in the laboratory. So generally we've always had crown and bridge technicians and removable technicians. And we really didn't cross. I mean, some people were talented enough to be both, but generally you kind of had denture partial laboratories and crown and bridge laboratories. Several years ago, I was asked to be on the denture module development team for Iva Clark and Three Shape. And my, my first question was, why do you want me on the team? I don't know anything about dentures. 
And the answer was, well, that's exactly why we want you on the team because you don't know anything about dentures. So I was able to learn how to do a basic denture. I was certainly no master at the time, but I learned how to do dentures on a computer because of my digital background in two days and then have been learning a whole lot from many other mentors over the past three or four years as we've been doing this. But those things have changed. And even what I do today and what the team here does is more in communication and taking data and building virtual patients. And then we do a lot of the heavy lifting. So we get intraoral data, face scans, CT data. <clears throat> from all those data sets, we can pretty much do anything from restorative to ortho to surgical. And we bring all that in, do the heavy lifting of what all the specialists would like to see, and then bring them in to, to adjust and make changes as they see fit. The other one is technical dentist. This has actually been around for a while. If any of your clients are CEREC dentists, E4D dentists, or any of the other systems out there, and are making their own teeth, they are technical dentists. They're actually doing our job, which is they're becoming a technician. Then the other one, because I speak a lot at implants, at implant meetings now, probably that more than anything else, is restorative surgeons. So one of the things that's been really nice, we do a lot of surgical design work here and to have the restorative dentist, the surgeon and myself all together with the patient, totally designing everything and trying to make everybody happy from me, the dentist, the patient, the restorative surgeon, moving things so it's all very optimal and effective is communication really like we've never had before. So we've all become digital technicians. Uh, we use, uh, and there's a lot of communication softwares out there today. We use TeamViewer, but uh, we live on TeamViewer literally all day long communicating with our clients and their specialists that they work with. So let's look at a digital laboratory real quick. Even that's changed immensely. My The dental lab that I built 15, 20 years ago looks nothing like the laboratory we have today because we are totally digital in everything we do. So this is what our laboratory looks like today. It's not always that clean, but it is a lot of computers. We still have hand pieces. We still have furnaces because we do finish things by hand, but everything is designed on computer. Everything is made by robots, and then we finish it by hand to send it out the door. So a lot of the things we're looking at today, and this is where Bellis really comes in, you know, the three things that we hear about today are artificial intelligence, which our software programs can virtually do right now. And we're gonna see a lot more artificial intelligence and the computers actually designing the restorations. We're gonna see that a lot more in the coming years. Robotic manufacturing, everything in my laboratory is created by robots. They work all night and all weekend. Yes, they do get sick and it costs a lot to make them well again. So um, maintenance is a big thing on all our printers and mills that we run constantly here. And then augmented reality uh, with patients being able to see what their final restorations are going to really look like before we even start the restorative process. I mean, there's a lot of really cool things out there. So let's talk about the data. We need to start building that digital patient. Intraoral scan and CT scan, and then the Bellis face scan. So the Bellis face scan is kind of the new one that we're adding uh, to our virtual patient where we can actually see things. <clears throat> so I read a lot, um, and I read a lot of AI books on artificial intelligence. I have a whole libra li library. So one of the sentences that I see through every book that I ever read, not that it says exactly the same thing in every book, but to paraphrase, technological advance is not a linear progression, but it is now based on exponential jumps. And what that means is as humans, we tend to think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight where technology doesn't work that way anymore. One and two don't always equal three any longer. The two things A and B may combine to jump up to G or F or H. So things happen very, very quickly. And that's kind of what happened with Bellis. 
So two things happened, which was the iPhone being able to have facial recognition. Bellis took advantage of that technology and built in a face scanner that's just simply an app. So you don't have to have any special equipment. You've got an iPad or an iPhone and you're ready to go with the app. Again, we were a dealer way back in the beginning because there were no other dealers that were really using this optimally. So we jumped in. Uh, in meetings with Whipmix, they got very excited about the technology when they came down to one of our courses. So we actually turned over our dealership to Whipmix, you know, one of the top functional aesthetic companies in the world. So we were very happy to turn everything we were doing over to them. So uh, again, Bernie, thank you for allowing us to do this today. So Bellis 3D is basically face scanning with a phone. So this is Joel, you're gonna meet him a little bit later. This is just a scan we did. And we're gonna be able to place that data into our computer data. We use three shape here. In the beginning, you weren't able to do this. So we kind of had to hack our way in to make it work, but then we were still missing the texture scan or the skin scan. So Bellis and 3Shape work together to be able to bring in all of these files so we can build a virtual patient. Now, I used to travel a lot before COVID-19. I'm actually enjoying not traveling, but uh, when I was gone, Joel would take his face scan and print himself out when I wasn't looking. So this is actually Joel printed out on our printers. So what is a face scan? So a face scan is a series of scans done on your phone. You're just basically moving your head, which you're going to see. So it's taking a lot of photographs and then putting those photographs together, kind of almost like a panoramic photo, but it's just three-dimensional. So it takes a lot of photos. It's actually very easy to do. Um, you know, you could download the software and take a scan of your face right now. Joel will go through this. It's very intuitive. The software actually tells you exactly what to do. But on an iPad or an iPhone, there, and it has to be an iPad uh, Pro or an or a iPhone 11 to be able to get the face scanning. We prefer to do our face scans with an iPad Pro because it's just bigger and we get a little more data. But that little camera at the top that is your security camera for face scanning also will scan your face into a 3D image. And we're gonna go through this, <clears throat> moving your head. It's gonna take images, both 3D and the texture of your skin, and then overlay those automatically. And then we can bring that file into our software and start pinning things together. So face scanning is nothing new. It's been around for many years. <clears throat> and I've looked at it, looked at it at IDS, looked at different systems, but it was really expensive and really complicated. The expensive part was the bigger part for me because I just couldn't see an ROI of buying it, having it in my laboratory, which was no use to me and not being able to use it for clients. <clears throat> when we saw the commercial version of Bellus 3D come out several years ago, we were immediately calling them to see if we could do something. So again, face scanning is not really new. It's been around for a while, but again, very expensive. So we've gone from 10 to 15 to $25,000 down to an app with a phone you already have for about 400, four or $500 and you don't need to really buy anything. So the equipment was expensive. The software was a little complicated <clears throat> to be able to do, but this is really, really where it changed things is the ability to do something and either buy it for our clients, which we've done to be able to get this information. It's just a service we offered <clears throat> in exchange for more efficiency and to be a little more unique than you know, some of the competitors out there because we were able to put all this together. <clears throat> but very accessible, high quality. I can call any of my accounts, either they're purchasing or I'm purchasing it for them. Uh, and it's they're up and running and ready to send scans. So we do a lot of orthognathic work here, uh, as well as uh, implant surgery. So we can overlay those scans and do some amazing things. Also for patient motivation, 
the doctor can use the software immediately to give a patient a simulation of what they're going to be looking like. Again, it's not perfect, but it is a simulation on a little patient excitement. Again, an orthognathic simulation. So it's also very shareable too. So the dentist is generally going to be taking most of the scans, sending it to the laboratory, where we're going to do a little work and import it into our software, where we can then design teeth, send it back to the dentist, and the dentist can show it to the patient. So it's, it's very, very cool. The dentist can also use libraries already in the software to do that themselves. Again, it's just a simulation of what they could potentially have. It's not an exact, um, but we can do it exact. But if, if the dentist doesn't want to send it to us, he can still use the software and the face scan to show the patient immediately, potentially what they would be able to look like with a new set of teeth. Now, the cool thing in Chicago this year, 3Shape and Bellis announced a partnership that allows Bellis to be imported and exported a little bit easier into 3Shape, and it can be done with a 3Shape scan, a TRIO scan with Communicate. So that makes it a little easier to get the data to us. And then the one thing we worked with them very closely on is they came out for a course here just to see what we were doing. Because they didn't really, it was kind of fun. Uh, and these guys are really intelligent uh, and really fun to work with. <clears throat> but they didn't really see why we needed a face scan in dentistry. So they said, can, you, can we come to your course? And we're like, of course, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you here. And then when they saw what we look at aesthetically and how we relate the teeth to the lips, the eyes, the face, but <clears throat> both functional and aesthetic, uh, then they really looked. And that night at dinner, having a beer, I, you know, we started to explain the concept of a face bow to them. And we're really looking to get that into software because anytime we talk digital, anytime I ever lecture, everybody always goes, yeah, but do you have a digital face bow? Well, yes, we do. We have one now. And Joel's going to get into a little more of this, but once the face scan is done, we can apply a digital face bow and adjust functional and aesthetic planes and then import all of that into our software and use those planes to verify, check, or mount on the digital articulator with more accuracy. So this was, this was really the thing that we worked with them to get that done. And then we're going to bring that into our software, and I'll show you a little bit later what we do. <clears throat> so we're going to scan, we're going to align teeth, we're going to place the digital face bow on, and then we're going to bring that into our software where we can mount it more accurately on the digital articulator. It gets very, very cool right here. Now, when we've got the intraoral scans and the CT scan, we can actually align the CT scan and condylar anatomy up to the articulator's condylar form. So it gets, it gets really fun. Uh, plus, the communication value of seeing the teeth in the patient's mouth when we're designing surgery or restorations is, is really, really cool. So the digital face bow is what we'll be talking about uh, and the thing that's really become the missing link. So what I want to do now is I'm going to switch over to Joel. Uh, Joel is you know, one of the amazing people we have on our team here. And he's going to actually go through the process of taking the scan, how we do it, and then importing it back into 3Shape. And then I'll show you some of the applications that we use when we're designing anything from ortho to dentures to crown and bridge to just diagnostics. So Joel, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right. So here we have the Dental Pro. I'll be showing you step-by-step uh, -step on how to walk through the Dental Pro. Um, so here we have the home screen of the application. My first recommendation for using this app is getting the iPad Pro. It does have facial recognition, which you will need. Uh, or the other option will be using the um, iPhone. The newer ones, they also have facial recognition. 
Um, so here we have the home screen and you have your settings. I wanna make sure that you have your service level down at the bottom that is advanced <coughs> and your service status is active. You will have an expiration date, so keep that in mind. Up on top, you do have your Bellis 3D um, account information. On the second one, it's your third party service. That will be your 3Shape Communicate account. So log into that one. So I'll take you step by step. Uh, we'll do a new scan. Here I am. All right, so some, some things to keep in mind will be keeping the background uh, just a solid color. Use, we have a gray background, so that'll work perfect. Uh, patients with glasses, make sure you do take those off. You do see some of that reflection, which will interfere with the scan. Um, some other things. Uh, so we have the ring lights that pretty much focuses the light on the patients. Uh, you can see it a little bit on my eyes. Uh, I have a, about 35% on this lighting um, so those are beneficial uh, you want to avoid some of the windows uh, natural lighting because that will affect uh, just the focus on the face scan and um, some of the lighting up on top you will get some of the shadow down at the bottom of the patient so there's three options here you have the face scan which is just a simple face scan you have the face and the neck and you have a full head. Now, I recommend using the full head. This is a new feature. Uh, you will have to rotate just a little bit more further back, uh, but it'll stitch a full head. So I will show you now on how to scan. And if, if this is very user-friendly. It'll walk you on what to do. Look at the camera. Turn left. Turn to the middle. Turn right. Turn to the middle. Tilt your head up. Turn to the middle. Tilt your head down. Turn to the middle. Capture completed. So give it a few seconds to load that in. And here I am with the 3D face scan. And you can see how it just stitches in the back. Um, you have a clear uh, scan of the ear. So with, with patients with longer hair, make sure those are pulled back. We will use the, uh, the ear to line up the Cambridge plane. So some of the stuff on, on the side uh, toolbar. So you have the lighting, uh, you can drag this little light bulb around, um, tell scary stories there. So here I was talking about the lighting up on top. So you have the shadow down at the bottom of the chin. So I like to keep the that little light bulb right on the nose. Just keep it nice and clear on the face scan. Uh, some of the backgrounds. So I like to use the dark backgrounds just because it focuses more on the face then using the brighter backgrounds and some of the lighting is interfering with your eyes. So keep the, the background dark. You are able to hide away the eyes of the patient. So if you're ever lecturing, you wanna use the Bellas 3D, go ahead and conceal the eyes. So something, something else that I like about this is that it'll capture 2D images along with you scanning the 3D face. So some of those pictures you are able to use. And they also, with the whole coronavirus um, coming our way, they did an update where you can do your own face mask there. So with this, We'll be, we'll be saving this and you type in the patient's name. Save that. Give it a few seconds to save. And 
for our doctors, what we ask and keep things simple and a great communication, we just ask for them to save their face scan, click info at the bottom, and you have uh, the model information, which is your face scan information. And so we're able to use the model ID. So with that code, I can access this face scan from any device I need it to pull up. So I can use the iPad, I can use a desktop, and I'll be able to pull this uh, face scan with this code. So what I ask for them, uh, the one at the bottom, allow people with model ID, is just highlight export and take a screenshot of this and text it to us or email it. Either one works, uh, but now we're able to use or see the model ID code and just verifying that they did select the export button. Um, it's kind of hard uh, for us to verify that they did select the export button when I'm trying to pull up this face scan and it arrows out is pretty much because of this. So we make sure that we are able to see the model ID code along with uh, the export button being highlighted. So those are, that's pretty much what we asked from the dentists is just take the face scan, save it into your, your account, clicking info, taking a screenshot and texting it or email it to one of us. Now we'll go through what we do here at Sculpture Studios and what the lab side will be doing. So we go back to our home screen, we go to model names, and here we have all of our face scanning that we've done with the iPad. So I go to a line, right top corner, and you have some options here. So uh, we have the option to align two face models, which will most likely be your natural smile face scan, along with a retracted smile face scan. So you're able to line those two up. The second option is your jaw models. So here are you bringing in your upper and lower models along with uh, stitching it to the face scan. Uh, the third option is the CT scans. So for now, I'll be clicking on jaw models and I'll be bringing in my upper and lower. And here they've given us this new option, uh, bringing in three shape. So clicking in three shape and I'll be looking up my models. Select the correct one. It, it'll ask you to bring in upper and lower at the same time, so just load in both. Give it a few seconds to bring those in. This is bringing it straight from your 3Shape Communicate account. All right, so bringing those in. And you can see right off the bat, the upper and lower is locked into the, the byte scan. So that is good. And then down at the bottom model to align from will be the T-Smile select from your model gallery just because uh, the face scan is was done with the iPad. Um, if we receive the model ID, then I would be clicking that, plugging in the code, and I can access the face scan that your client has done. All right, so for now, model gallery, and I'll be looking through and finding my face scan. It will say alignment completed, um, but you will be doing some tweaking. All right, so here you have the face scan along with the intraoral scans, upper and lower, locked in. And what we're doing here is we're keeping the uh, intraoral scans locked where they are and just 
placing the face scan on top of that. So we're not interfering with any dental uh, files. All we're doing is placing the face scan right on top. So here you're aligning a 3D model to those 2D images. And if you can tell, I'm clicking on buttons, plus or minus. Getting them close as possible. All right. Next tab, lip line. So you're putting those green dots right around the inner lip contours. Clicking apply. Going to the next tab, guides. All right, so the midline, I'm using the facial structures. All right, so you can tell my midline is off. Next one, interpupillary, getting right on the center of the eyes there, and using the top of the ear. Next one, campers. So using the bottom tip of the nose, along with the inner ear. and the occlusal plane. So what I like to do when I'm using the occlusal plane, go back to tools and clicking on the eye with T-Smile and it'll hide away your face scan. So just so you're more focused on the actual occlusal. All right, going back to tools and bringing the face cam back in. I will save this. Hit save. All right, so now this workspace is being saved. This file will be the face scan aligned to the upper and lower intraoral scans. All right, and now what I'll do is I'll export the face scan, HD. Now you, you have three options here. You have the OBJ, PLY, and STL. And the OBJ and STL are pretty much the same thing. It'll just be a gray model. Uh, you will lose the color and texture. So what you'll need is to export the PLY. So those lock in the face scan, uh, the texture, and the color. So what I like to do is just email this to myself. I have my email set up here on the iPad and I have the my email set up on my desktop just to be switching back and forth between the two. So you email those. Send that. Going back to guides, clicking export. Same thing, you'll want the PLY, email, and this is just a quick way for me to transfer from the iPad to the desktop, getting things in through shape. All right, click done. And now I'm turning it back to Lee. He will show you how we bring uh, face scans into our three shape. Take it away.
Good. Bernie? That's good. We're good. All right. So, yeah, we, we really saw Bellis as the missing link in communication in what we're able to do. So this is, this is um, Matt, Joel, and I were actually at the University of Chicago, UIC, uh, installing the lighting and iPad and software to the prosthetic residency group up there. And again, like I said, whether we're just doing face and intraoral scans, uh, you can hook this up to model scans also, uh, or whether we're bringing in CT scans for surgery, this has just allowed us to do some amazing, amazing things. So most of our clients are using this uh, about the time we started really applying it to everybody, COVID-19 reared up. So now that we're slowly back in business, we're, we're working on getting everybody back up with face scans. And again, it's, it's something that's easy to do. It's something with the equipment in, in your office. So it's, it's, not, it's not a complex process to be able to do this. So there we go. So here's Joel. Uh, you've already kind of seen how we did that. So now it's now that we've got the face scan back in the software, what do we do with it? You know, how, how are we using it? So we use it for everything. We use it for diagnostics. We use it for restorative. We use it for dentures. We use it for maxillofacial. You know, we're, we're using it really on a regular basis now that our clients have learned how easy it is to get the scans to us. And this is where we're really aligning the articulator up to the face scans to get everything aligned a little bit better to ensure that uh, what we're designing is going to be proper in the mouth. And one of the things I've learned after doing this for 40 years is I'm always looking for the most efficient, predictable way to do something. Uh, you know, we, we do some very custom work like most laboratories out there, but I want it efficient and predictable because I'm still running a business and I don't like surprises. This has eliminated some of the surprises we see kind of on a regular basis. So let's look at just some diagnostics real quick. So this is where we would do some diagnostics for a patient and then send these back to the dentist to let the patient show, or just to even kind of kind of go over the whole thing with the dentist and just show potential problems of what we're experiencing and what we're going to do. So this is a very, very simple, really just an aesthetic case. Uh, we're placing the teeth on, but you know, I'm going from photos, uh, looking at photos, to see if there's a cant, to see incised ledge position, and really doing the best I can because a diagnostic wax up is really the best educated guess you can do. And we've been doing, I've been doing that for 30 years, uh, but it is a pretty much an educated guess. So now when we do have the patient, we've got the coloration of the teeth, we've got the patient that we can bring in we can do some amazing things. And even on diagnostics, we're able to do things that we've never done before with a precision and efficiency that's higher than we've ever had before. So again, this is just a very simple diagnostic case. We're gonna move on to something a little more complex and restorative. So this is an interesting case. We do a lot of teaching with the Dawson Academy, uh, and Whitmix also works very close, so it's, it's really three groups that work very, very close together. But this is a case I was doing with one of the instructors, Dr. Drew Cobb, and we had done the diagnostics, we had done the provisionals, and everything was done. Now we're ready to move on to the restorative phase, and this is kind of what we were presented with, is this is our patient. So normally we're going to start from here and we've got the provisionals, we've got the bite, everything's looking good. We've already done the provisionals. The provisionals were approved by the dentist and the patient. So I'm just walking through my normal design process. But when I put everything together, uh, I've got the teeth, I'm going to start designing. These are the provisionals we've already done. We're going to go into color and now we're going to bring the patient in. 
and then start really looking at the designs because this is this was the first case uh, that I really saw why we need this technology because when we bring in the face this is what I was seeing I was seeing a slight cant that nobody had reported uh, didn't get that information from the dentist and I'm looking at it and I, I call the dentist up and I go can I get a really good photo of the patient because I wanted to ensure that what the accuracy of what I'm looking at on my 3D data is exactly what I'm seeing in a 2D photograph and this the data and when we put things together is incredibly accurate so I'm looking at the photo and I see the slight cant also so it was so easy and you can kind of see it there a little bit it was so easy to take the designs that I was doing and change them ever so slightly to get that lined up a little bit better. Now he does have a slight midline problem. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. We can adjust as well as possible, but this is where it got really cool. Uh, and I was able to do that and get that done before we ever made the restorations because I've literally got the patient right in my office and I'm looking at what's there, what I'm designing and the potential of what I could do. I can show this also to the doctor, let him go on my computer with TeamViewer, which we did and just get approval that we're going to slightly change everything. And then for functional movements, we're going to align the articulator a little bit tighter with the digital face bow. So we're gonna align everything we're going to take the teeth and the face and just move the articulator and align everything to a higher precision before we really get into our, our articulator movements. And then we can align it to the face a little bit better also. So there's so many reasons for using this for, for larger cases. <clears throat> when we started, it was kind of funny because we would take everything we did um, from second molars, first molars, bicuspids, and I'm like, Take, take a face scan just so we can get used to this. Now, this is really where it kind of stood out as something that was needed in dentistry. So I've been doing dentures now for about four years, digital. I have no idea how to make a denture conventionally. I can do it digital. But in learning dentures from you know, some really good mentors, Dr. Lyndon Cooper, uh, Dr. Uh, um, Dr. Lita Swan, my wife, uh, who's a prosthodontist also. But one, of, one of the things that I was trying to visualize is where do you put the teeth? How do you know where to put the teeth? And there are obviously anatomical landmarks. I've learned a lot over the past three years, but it's still, even with all the information we get, it's still a little, a little guessing as to where things are going to go and to ensure they're proper. So we still use bite blocks, we still use bite rims, we still mark all those things, we still use anatomical landmarks, obviously. But to be able to bring this into a patient's environment is so cool in what we can do today. So we're just going to kind of start with a, a denture setup. And then we're going to move into and get a little more information. So the denture software is, is actually pretty cool. It allowed me to, to learn things very, very easily. But when we can bring in the patient on a denture like this and really see midline, see can't, see all those things and adjust them very, very accurately, then this is where we can get some incredible results because we do have the patient right there and we can see in size of length, we can see lip, uh, we can see two scans because as Joel told you, we can bring in different scans, lips at repose. We do need a fairly large facial scan to be able to pin everything together, but we can change the face scans out and go to something a little more of a repose to be able to look at what we're doing. So when we get all of this done, then it becomes very, very easy to make a denture. So I'm going to step back one second.
bring this up real quick. But this is this is this is my wife with her patient, and this is our typical setup, which is a ring light. We do use the iPad Pro 11 because it does fit in the holder and fit in the ring light very very nicely. So this is her bringing this information in for our patient. As you saw with Joel, the software actually tells you exactly what to do. Patient's got to give a smile so we can see some teeth. He did have an existing older denture. And then the software tells you exactly what to do, how to turn your head, how to move. The software is now using infrared technology on the camera to capture 3D and 2D data that we're going to bring back. And then the software will put all of this data together and create our virtual patient that we can then pin the natural teeth or the denture teeth. If we're doing this with immediate dentures, it's very, very easy to do. So we're processing on the screen, but one of the coolest things is the patients when they see it for the first time. So <laughs> he's looking at this. Uh, the patients think this is the coolest thing in the world, and especially when they see what we're going to do with it and how we're using that technology, it gets amazingly very, very cool for the patient, the dentist, and in the communication for us between all the parties involved. <clears throat> so we're going to get back to this real quick. So here's our final denture. And we're going to bring all that information and get back to our patient. So again, we've got some amazing technology that will allow us to do almost anything you can conceive more predictably than we've ever done it before. And the way we work is almost complete digital. We still get impressions into the laboratory, obviously, but I'd say maybe 60% of the data that does come in is from intraoral scans. We've got most of our clients using this now. So the data sets that we're getting on a normal basis are intraoral scan, a face scan, and a CT scan if we are doing surgery. And the same thing, when we are doing complex surgery, we're doing bone reduction, we're really doing some, some very intense surgical work and the placement of implants. All of this gives us all the information we need to really be more predictable in what we're doing. So Bernie, Joel, and I would like to thank everybody. We'd like to take this last few minutes and see if there's any questions that we can answer for anybody. If we don't have the answer, we'll get those answers for you. But kind of in closing, <clears throat> we really saw the importance of this and the way it would allow us to communicate with our, question, our, our clients. But it also allows your laboratory to differentiate, to be different, to do things that other laboratories aren't doing, uh, to bring in these data sets, because our laboratory is a little bit different than it was even five years ago. We've moved into specializing into creating virtual patients. This was the last piece we didn't have because we like to do these larger cases and to be able to bring these data sets together puts us in a very unique position in the dental lab community in being able to do this. So what I've been trying to tell technicians for the last several years is rethink what you do, rethink what you are as a laboratory. Don't stop making things because that's what we do. But there's a lot more besides the final making the, the diagnosis or treatment plan and working with the clients up front allows you to do these types of cases that you want to do. So Bernie, I'm going to turn it over to you to see if there's any questions. Okay. And we'll try and get those answered for you. Will do. I'll give those to you verbally. Thank you very much for a great presentation to both of you, actually. Um, all right. Well, here's a few questions. Let's, let's get okay. going. Uh, the first one is, is, does it have to be a, an iPhone 11 or an iPad Pro? only 
Yes, right now, uh, it doesn't support other the firm technologies. It does need to be iPhone with facial recognition or iPad. So iPad Pro, so it's gotta be a Pro that has facial recognition and then iPhone 11s also. Okay. Uh, next one is where can we buy the ring light and an iPad holder like that? So anybody who's interested, um, if we, through Bernie, if we can get their information, it really comes right off of Amazon. We did try a couple of lights and holders to get what we felt was optimal to be able to place everything together. But it's right on Amazon. It's not expensive. Uh, we send that out to our dentists. You know, as they, as we install it in the app and the, their technology, we send them or just send them the links to on Amazon to get those two pieces because the ring light really, really makes a difference. Uh, to be to be under clinical light or just ambient light, you you can get a good scan, but you get a great scan with the ring light. Yeah, and I should say too that uh, following the, the program uh, within a day or so, everybody will be contacted. Uh, first, to be thanked uh, for, for joining us, but also to give them the uh, C, C, uh, CDT information for, for credit. But the other thing too is that um, we will also ask if you have any interest in learning more about the system and we have our group that is very happy to talk with you and, and uh, answer those those types of questions. So you'll be contacted shortly. Uh, Lee, which three shaped software do we need for this? Really just the, the kind of the regular Crown and Bridge denture software. So there's nothing special, it works. I mean, we've used it on 2018, 2019, we're using it on 2020. So really nothing special. And same thing, Bernie, we're gonna do the same thing. This was an introduction, you know, not a real working how you do everything. This was really to show the potential and the coolness of, of the application. But we're also going to be doing, because we're pretty much all back at work here in the laboratory now. So we'll get some more instructional videos up on our YouTube channel um, that explains it in a little more detail. This was really to show the potential of the technology. Yeah. Okay, uh, next, how do you import the scans into 3Shape? So I'm gonna let Joel kind of verbally go over that a little bit. It's, it, that's one of the things we're doing for our YouTube channel to make sure everybody understands exactly how to get it into 3Shape, Joel. So with importing uh, the POY face scan, so it'll be an additional scan. So once you're getting ready to design, open up the file, uh, you'll see the additional scan import. Um, so you're able to bring the, bring it in that way. Um, so you can bring in multiple face scans. You can bring in the natural smile. You can bring in the retracted smile. Uh, same way you'll bring in the, the guide planes. So all it is is uh, clicking additional imp uh, scans, importing it that way. Uh, just make sure that your three shape software is able to work with PLY files. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joel. The next one is uh, how much is the 3D face scan app per month? Uh, and I can, I can answer that. Uh, basically we sell that for $480 annually. That's a, that's an annual subscription. Uh, so, and that's literally half of what it was just a, a, a few short months ago. So, um, that's all it'll, all it'll cost. You have to get the, the iPad uh, and, and the app and, and you're in business. So that's what it is, 480. Uh, next question, Lee, we have this, but have some trouble finding a good place to go to get some training on the particulars of how to work with it. Do you have any good training sources? Yes, so everybody is rethinking training uh, as well as us. So, you know, the, the, Training of the past, bricks and mortar, even though I spent lots of money on my bricks and mortar facility here, we're working to keep 
everybody comfortable and safe. So we're putting together one of those right now uh, in a Zoom class format. So you can see our computers, we can interact. Um, and it, like I said, we're, we're really starting to get back into business here too. So watch uh, our website, watch um, um, social media, watch uh, um, Whitmix. Yes, we are going to have classes that we can really go through this, plus doing some things on the YouTube channel to make sure everybody understands it and gets all their questions answered. Thank you. So this, this was kind of our first step, kind of our coming out party. Um, for Bellis, so we've got a lot of things that we're working on right now. So we'll have a lot of information on this and other things coming up really soon. Thank you. Same with Whitmix, we are planning courses and, and of course we have a lot of videos in the making and so on. So thank you for yep. that question. Um, I, would like, I would like where, or I guess to know where to get the Amazon links to, the, to buy the light and holder. Uh, Lee, if you actually have the link, uh, you can send it to me and, and we can provide them uh, when, we, when we write to them for the CDT stuff, Perfect. we can give them the link, if you have it. We'll get those to you today. All right. Um, uh, I believe these are only PLY files. Oh, well, okay, you can answer that. Did you hear the question? I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. Just, I believe these are only PLY files, and, and you know, the, it's, actually the, the, it's actually a combination of a 3D STL file, uh, because you can remove the PLY file off in your computer, and you'll, it'll look like a clay person. They'll be gray, like your th three shape models. And then you can apply the PLY file back to it. But when you export it, they both kind of come in together because the PLY file file does automatically wrap around 3D file within Bellis. So it is kind of two files coming into your system. Okay. That's one of the things we needed to fix in the beginning. <clears throat> we, Joel and Matt here, figured out how to get Bellis files into 3Shape long, long time ago. <clears throat> but we were not able to bring the PLY file in. So Bellis and 3Shape working together allowed us to bring in both of those files so we can actually see skin tones. Okay. Uh, what software do you use for a virtual articulator? So we're, we're all 3Shape here. <clears throat> so within 3Shape, there is a virtual articulator and there is a variety of articulators for you to choose from. So Whipmix has their articulators in there as well as several other companies. So you can pick the articulator you would like to use, but the articulators are already within the three shape system. Yeah. Uh, next one, can we import in dental system multiple face scans, smile and no smile? Yes. So <clears throat> with Bellis, to be able to pin all the models together, we need a big smile because we need to see enough teeth to be able to pin the Bellis file to the iOS file. <clears throat> a lot of times that smile is too big to design from because it's not a natural smile. So we can do something a little more at repose, a little more natural. Um, don't know that we really need one closed all the way because we couldn't see any teeth, but yes, you are able to bring in one to, that is optimized for pinning data together and then one that is a little more natural for the patient. Okay, next question. Can the mandible be mounted in relation to the maxilla without any contact? Yes, yeah, so getting getting a little more complex here. So you when when an intraoral scan comes in, the teeth do not have to be in contact, contrary to popular belief. Again, we do a lot of work with Dawson Academy, Bernie, like you do, yeah. and a lot of the time the bites are taken in centric relation where there is no tooth contact that is very scannable, very importable. And then we can mount it on the digital articulator 
and either open or close from that point. So you can open vertical on a digital articulator. You can close vertical. Uh, we do that a lot of times when we're working on dentures uh, or we're doing big restorative cases to really look at what happens if we close or open vertical and what that's going to do uh, to add either good things or bad things to the restorative process. But uh, yes, you, you can, the teeth do not have to be touching for an intraoral scan and you can certainly open the articulator once the models are virtually mounted on the digital articulator. Okay. Uh, next question, does the dentist need to purchase the three shape denture software or does the lab have it? The lab would have it unless the dentist just wants to make dentures, then, then he can certainly get it. But uh, generally, and again, we're totally different, totally different communication here, but there's, there are certain scans and certain impressions that we take to be able to scan them into our system to do a denture. Um, and then we can add the face scans to that. But uh, generally the lab is going to have the digital denture software and work from, like usual, from RX, from a dentist. You're just gonna be doing everything by digital design and milling or printing to make your denture. Okay, and this is from a dentist. Uh, if you're not involved with a three-shape design, how do you export these files to the lab? So a couple of ways, Joel, take it away. All right, so it'll pretty much be the same exact way as sharing the model ID code uh, as you would if they had 3Shape. Um, I played around just uh, very little with ExoCAD. Uh, I believe you also have an additional scans option. Uh, so you'd bring it in the exact same way. But as long as we have the file number, uh, and again, just to make sure everybody understands this, so the dentist and the lab that are working together both have to have the system. So we have Bellus. You know, we're not doing a lot of face scanning here, but we do have the Bellus software to be able to take those imports. So when a dentist takes a scan and gives us the file number, it's very easy for Joel to go find that and bring it straight into the system. Very good. Uh, the rest, let me see, scan need to be from three shape. A lot of these are repeats, so I'm just going to go through. Uh, okay. Is it intended to serve only three shape dentists? Well, we kind of have an answer for that. Uh, and really the last one is again about the fees and subscriptions, and I'll just repeat that it's an annual subscription fee of $480 for the app and you do have to purchase, if you don't have the uh, iPad Pro, you'll need to, uh, to get one of those. That is the end of the questions. So guys, thank you so much for, for a great presentation. Uh, You're welcome. Terrific and uh, we'll have more advanced information coming down the pike soon. Yes. Uh, but this is a good, this is a good way to, to, uh, to have ended this. Thank you. You're welcome. Y'all, everybody have a good, safe day, safe week. Uh, we're back in business. If there's anything we can do to help anybody, please let us know. But y'all have a great week. Same from Whitmix. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, thank you.